Hi, this is Dave Dora, and welcome to the KMC Heritage Hall Museum. The museum has been a passion of mine for at least 20 years. And with uh, the support of other people, uh, and particularly our current president, Tak Teranishi, who has also a passion for history, we've collected an amazing amount of documents and put together this museum for both the employees and eventually the public. The concept of this museum is to represent the, uh, the heritage of Kawasaki Motors USA. This museum represents the heritage of a sales and marketing company. The reason to build this was that we were undergoing a generational change in our company. A lot of new employees coming in, but a lot of older employees retiring. So the baby boom is retiring, and with them goes the historical knowledge of the company. When you start and you come into the museum, what you'll see is you see one of the oldest, one of the older motorcycles we have. It's a 1966. And there's a backdrop here which has the logo of the museum. It allows people coming in to actually take a picture. Once you round the corner, you'll notice that the motorcycles are in the center of the museum. We start out with motorcycles from the early 60s, progress out into the 70s, and then on this side is several motorcycles that are relative to the racing heritage of the company. The second largest display are what are called the timeline boards. It's an education timeline of the significant events in the history of the company. And the idea that people will come in and they will go down through the five decades of boards and become familiar with our history. This is the only remaining poster we have. It's poster size of one of the Norman Rockwell art pieces. In addition, we have the only remaining what is called Z1 jacket that was actually worn by an actor in the photo. Coming across this way, one of the legendary motorcycles is the Z1, and we put on the wall uh, magazine covers. When this hit the market, it was a revolution in the marketplace and made all the magazine covers. Opposite it, the 1984 Ninja 1000. Again, a revolutionary bike in the industry and started uh, a lot of the sport bike craze. Prior to 1986, Kawasaki was spread out in four separate buildings within Orange County. Uh, in early 85, there was a groundbreaking ceremony on this property and the start of construction of this building. What this display captures is that process of the construction of the building. Kawasaki was the first company to implement an electronic parts ordering program called K-Share by using an electronic terminal in 1980. Uh, this is the original terminal for, that was placed in a, in a local Costa Mesa dealership. This large board is the Shogun Retirees. In order to be a Shogun Retiree, you have to have 10 years of the company and you have to be 55 years old. This area, all down through here, is for the racing activities of the company. Posters of, of Ricky Carmichael, Jeff Ward, James Stewart, uh, a lot of the racers that uh, came up through the Team Green ranks. This particular uh, refrigerator is referred to as the racing refrigerator. It's been around the company for over 30 years and over time the race team has put stickers on it. You'll find that there are stickers from the 60s on this all the way up through into current times. Team Green bike, which is James Stewart's, when he was in Team Green before he went pro. We've collected, uh, as a sales and marketing company, um, a lot of memorabilia that we put out in merchandising. Uh, the two oldest things we have in here are some decals and a tie class from 1986. There are several pieces of clothing here and also on the mannequins around the room that are, as far as we know, one of a kinds. Uh, the green jacket was used as a salesman's jacket back in the uh, 70s. And there are team racing jackets from the 70s and actually into the late 60s on this wall. All of this is the physical museum. It serves hopefully to educate new employees, but we also are implementing today an online museum. Within that database, as we call it, are hundreds of documents that we could not display here. When you put these two together, the physical and the online, 
It represents a large collection of information to educate employees uh, about the, the company, its past, and where we go into the future. In terms of the online museum, I would estimate that we only have 10% of all the documents, photos, and memorabilia uh, captured in digital image and recorded into the electronic database. For instance, all of this material in the memorabilia cases has yet to be photographed and cataloged. So I hope that gives you a good idea of what we're trying to do here. And like I say, uh, in about 90 days, we hope to open this to the public uh, so they can come in and see our, our rich heritage.